From Daily Trust News Center, this is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, presidential contenders differ on policy directions at NBA annual general meeting in Lagos. Military bombs, ice swab leaders, and cliff in Sambisa Forest. Federal government introduces vaccine to fight diarrhea among children. And on the forums in DR Congo confirms new case of Ebola linked to 2018 outbreak. Hello and welcome to News Hour on Trust Television. I am Nten Ekman with the details. Presidential candidates of People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and Labour Party's Peter Obi took turns to express divergent policy options to get the country out of the woods. The duo spoke at the ongoing NBA annual general conference in Lagos. APC vice presidential candidate Kashim Shetima represented Bola Ametunubu at the conference, themed Bold Transition. The report. The annual general conference of the Nigerian Bar Association is declared open by the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo Diariwola. At least 13,000 lawyers are attending the meeting, which is both physical and virtual. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, told the conference that if given the opportunity, he will hand over federal government-owned universities to state governments to manage. I stated that there are five key areas that any leadership, forget about party, any leadership, whichever for a political party, must confront these five issues. And I enumerated them. I said the unity of our country is very, very fundamental. And how do we achieve the unity of our country? Is by making sure that we give every part of this country a sense of belonging. Presidential candidate of Labour Party is, however, optimistic that a 2023 elections campaign will be centered on capacity of the contestants, irrespective of their ethnicity and religion. How did we come here? Is a cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years? Because it's 10 percent that stop here would have stopped our power. How did we come here? What are we going to do very quickly to come out of this? Very quickly, you need to have a visionary, articulated, competent leadership to start turning around this. Kashim Shatima, APC's vice presidential candidate, said if elected, Tunumbu will replicate the transformation of Lagos State on a national scale. I urge my learned colleagues here my learned friends here, to be rational, to be calm. You should have the boldness and the courage to make informed decisions, not emotional decisions. Here we are, on the threshold of making history. In the United Kingdom, Rishi Sunak, a young man of Indian descent, is about to become the Prime Minister of Britain. I urge you all, to align yourself with the aspirations of the APC candidate, fundamentally because of his competence. He has an established track record of performance. Lagos is now a tourist destination of choice in the West African sub-region. Speakers at the conference include outgoing NBA President Olumide Akpata and Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwolu represented. A former Kano state governor and senator representing Kano Central, Ibrahim Shikarau, may be planning his exit from the new Nigeria People's Party. Addressing his supporters in Kano, the senator accused NMPP of reneging on promises made to him and his supporters. He also replied to the new Nigeria People's Party, the NMPP presidential candidate, Rabiu Konkoso, on issues that have triggered the crisis in the party's Kano chapter. But Konkoso, who is also a former governor and senator from Kano, had in an interview with Bibi's Hosa said Shekarao's political camp failed to secure seats because they joined the NMPP late. His position had further raised dust in the political 
in the polity, especially among Shekharao's supporters, who faulted the claim, saying they joined the party same time with Shekharao, who was given the senatorial ticket. Speaking for the first time on the brewing disquiet, Shikarao, while addressing his supporters in Kano on Monday, said it was not true that the supporters joined the NMPP late, as stated by Congresso. Political party leaders in Katsina are worried about the large number of uncollected permanent voter cards at the offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Governorship candidate of Accord Party in Katsina State, Mohammed. Barrow wants political parties to mobilize followers to collect their PVCs ahead of the 2023 general elections. Abdullahi Yamadi completes that report. The Accord Party governorship candidate says people are not collecting their PVCs because of government's failure to fulfill its campaign promises to the electorate. The electorates have lost confidence and hope in the people in authority and are afraid to sacrifice their time and energy to elect another set of leaders who will not be concerned about their plight. People like us were made to move into this issue of politics for the fact that we have seen that the situation is bad. And I'm sure almost all of us are aware that the situation in this country is so bad, just like you said security-wise, economic-wise, and many other issues. So the truth of the matter is, this is the only one's chance to come out and vote for the person that he feels can do it. The truth of the matter is that we have had these challenges even during the registration exercise. Accord Party in particular, we gave support by trying to sponsor some people to go to the INEC headquarters and register their votes. We are also ensuring that they are going back to collect their PVCs. The Accord Party candidate is saying he has a lot of new things he will do differently to salvage people of Kazuna State from the hands of terrorists and other criminal elements. This will usher in new lease of life and inject love, togetherness and unity of purpose that will further bring all people of the state under one umbrella to chart a course for unprecedented socio-economic development. And the situation I'm looking at, Kazakhstan State, that is blessed with so many intelligent persons, professors, doctors, why should we be having challenges when it comes to administration? I feel that this is not the, the best for us. And the truth of the matter is that there are people, a lot of them, that have this particular idea. But probably, I don't know, uh, we are discouraged in one way or the other to come out and, and, and take these such uh, steps. He however calls on good people of Kazuna State to vote credible leaders based on competence, credibility and capability regardless of party affiliation. This will be the only option to the current hardship occasioned by insecurity and harsh economic realities. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazana. Away from politics now to security, troops of Nigerian Air Force have bombarded the enclave of the leader of the Islamic State of West African province, Fia Ba'ayuram, in Sambisa Forest with fighter jets. The airstrikes, which were carried out on some specific targets in the Tinbuns and Sambisa, reportedly killed scores of terrorists hibernating within the enclaves. Daily Trust had reported that Fia Ba'iram succeeded the late Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shikau after he was killed by a rival terror group. After taking over the leadership of the Boko Haram sect, he switched allegiance to ISWAP. NAV spokesman Edward Gabouet, an air commodore, confirmed the development in an interview with journalist in Abuja, saying the NAV won't, however, be drawn into the details of those neutralized. About 10 terrorists armed with AK-47 rifles have abducted 12 people attending a wedding in Ongoa Kudu in Dunsimi town. Two out of the 12 abductees narrowly escaped and another was rescued by a local vigilante on the outskirts of Dunsimi town. Abdullahi Ahmadi visited the area and met some of those that escaped. The terrorists were alleged to have been informed about the location of the event through a suspected female informant who was also in attendance during the wedding ceremony. 
On their arrival around 12 midnight, the terrorists went straight to the residence of Malam Babangida Abdullahi and boggled his window from where they gained access into his house. Some people again come to me and say I should go, to, I should follow them. I refuse to go. They start beating me with guns and, the, and, 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 and the other things. At the time, the first thing I saw my wife come out. That's why I, 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 ran, I rushed to, 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 to escape her. But I, don't, I couldn't help because there are many. The hoodlums also dispossessed Babangida Abdullahi and his family of money, phones, and other valuables before kidnapping their victims. Nine of them are there. Yes. Three are escaped. Okay, three escaped. Yes, uh, nine are there. One, one, uh, two escaped and one was rescued by uh, a vigilant. Exactly, okay. exactly, yes. Okay. Exactly, okay. yes. But the other nine are still there with them. Okay. Nur Abdullahi is one of the survivors who narrowly escaped from the hands of the terrorists. I narrowly escaped after moving into bushes with the terrorists for over 10 kilometers. I was lucky to have met a group of local vigilantes who rescued some of us from the kidnappers. Residents have vowed to mobilize themselves to face the terrorists, saying they are tired of series of assaults, abductions and killings. They are also saying that synergy with the security agencies to fish out and deal with the terrorists is necessary and there is no better time than now. In the meantime, victims of Shema Kota's attack in Duzimwa town who were abducted two months ago have regained freedom after payment of ransom. Among them is Lubabo Tishagari, who put to bed at the terrorist den. Though she regained freedom after payment of undisclosed amount of money as ransom, Lubabo too and her husband have since fled to Kanu for safety. Shema quarters looks deserted, with many houses locked, as residents were said to have fled to safer areas in Duzuma, Kazina and Kanu. But when they came back, she went to the general hospital to Zama and uh, uh, investigate or treat her. By that time, the doctor he advised her to add more blood mm. on her, okay. her transfusion. Oh, yeah. Yes. But the condition is okay. okay mm. uh, did you pay any ransom? Well, we fed. Like how much? How much? Uh, it's a secret. People here are in fear of uncertainty as hardly a day passes without recording attack from terrorists leading to either killing, abductions, wrestling of animals, or both. Abdullahi is my Amadi, Trust Television News, Katana. Two children were reported dead, while three adults sustained injuries when the building at Atelier Street. Bariga Lagos State collapsed on Sunday. Confirming the incident, the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Lasema, Olufemi Oke Osaintolo, said the agency, upon arrival at the incident scene, discovered that the tank scaffolding of a two story building collapsed on a bungalow beside it and affected two rooms. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya says the Nigerian Army is adopting new methods and techniques to ensure total defeat of the nation's adversaries and other criminal elements who have been undermining the sovereignty of Nigeria. General Yahaya said this during Exercise Camp Highland, the final training exercise of Cadet Regular Course 69 in Kachia, Kaduna State, Northwest Nigeria. Belo Musa reports. Exercise Camp Highland is the final phase of training with the battle inoculation for personal cadet at the Nigerian Defense Academy. The exercise, besides building skills and competence, is also exposes cadet to real-life battle situations. <laughs> Commandant of the Academy, Major General Ibrahim Yusuf, explained that additional courses were introduced in order to build cadet capacity for the task ahead. Almost five years of training, and by the end of the exercise today, 
the final year Army cadets of 69 regular course uh, will have completed their training. Nigerian's Chief of Army Staff commended the Academy for sustaining the training over the years and explained that the Army will continue to review the Academy's curriculum to meet Nigerian's dynamic security situation. Improve the training of cadets. NDA provides the basic requirement for training and we always review and assess the security situation, security environment and include as necessary other aspects, other packages of training in order to make you cadets, young officers, well fitted and rounded up as young officers in your career. The Army Chief won those and demanding the sovereignty of the country and advised them to give up their evil act or face the wrath of the law. Doing our best and the results are there are showing in the field and we will get there. For the criminals, whether they are terrorists, whether they are bandits or kidnappers, I have said that before, time is up. And we'll talk to them in language they understand. We'll send them to account for their sins. Highlight of the battle annihilation included narrative calm description, firepower demonstration, and assault of the enemy's territories. Bella Musa, Cross TV News Cabin. The Borinu State Government has confirmed its readiness to reconstruct both public and residential structures in a former Boko Haram stronghold recently recaptured by the military. The State Commissioner, Minister of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Mustafa Gubio said this after a visit to Gudumbali town, headquarters of Guzamala local government area of Borinu State. Gubio said now that the town has been recaptured, the committee's first priority is to have a military formation in Gudumbali so that reconstruction and resettlement process will be achieved soon. Residents of Oweri, the Imo state capital, say they are gradually defying the Monday sit-at-home order because of its adverse effect on the state's economy. The state of these while speaking to newsmen who monitor the activities in the state capital. The report. The Monday sit-at-home in the southeast may gradually become a thing of the past. This follows the fact that businesses in Oweri, the Imo state capital, commenced on Monday, which was not the case in the last one year. Residents describe the sit-at-home as a threat to businesses that are struggling to survive. It's affecting us, to be sincere. Are you getting me? It's affecting us. And it is because of all this, uh, uh, our leaders not doing the right thing. That is the reason why you find people, you know, people trying to show, you know, their anger. Let, let's put the NMD color aside. We are talking of what is happening in Nigeria. What is happening in Nigeria does not favor us at all, I understand. Then we come to the color issue. Now the Kali issue has come to stay. Whether, whether, whether Nigeria government like it or not, it has come to stay. You know, Imo State is part of the Niger Delta State. I hope you know that one of the oil producing states. You are some. And uh, the, the, uh, the people of the state, particularly people from that uh, uh, oil producing area, you are some, they are not even benefiting from the government. Although some residents were carrying out their regular businesses, other shops, business premises and schools are still under lock and key in major areas like Wedrow Road, Douglas Road and the Relief Market. Residents, however, decried the negative effect of this exercise on their businesses, the state's economy and the nation at large. When you talk about the Monday sit at home, and, uh, if we talk about that, uh, we have stayed close to one year now where we started this sit at home order. If you check economically, we are the one losing. Those, there, those people up there, they are busy embezzling our money. We say we are sitting at home and we are wasting time. Do you understand? If you stay at home, the economy is going down, Nigeria is not gaining. We are not gaining. We are in indirectly cheating our own self. I think it's very, very bad for businesses, for every business, for schools in particular. 
and I know what's going on with the ASU, and I'm, I don't even want to arrive to that. But the schools, Mondays, and and we find out that our the young ones are not having like um, only from Tuesday to Friday to go to school. So this is affecting us, and most especially, it's affecting businesses and even companies. So in general, it's affecting our economy. Although agitations continue, many are happy that they can go about their legitimate businesses as usual on Mondays. You're watching News Hour on Trust TV. Coming up after the break. Living without electricity for a long period. Please stay with us. Every patriotic Nigerian should hear this. Any politician who means well for the people will never allow themselves or their supporters to engage in any vile and destructive activities. No politician who truly wants to serve the people and develop the nation will encourage his followers to destroy properties or take human lives before, during or after the elections. The Nigerian public must watch out for these traits and isolate any politician who encourages supporters to engage in violence. No genuine politician or patriot will cause trouble and seek to destroy the very society which they aspire to lead or develop. Politicians who have the good of the people at heart will not allow themselves or their followers to engage in violence, destruction of properties and then taking of lives. Be vigilant. By their words, you shall know them. Shun violence. Stay away from politicians who want you to do so. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching News Hour on Trust TV, a recap of our major stories. Presidential contenders differ on policy directions at NBA AGM in Lagos. And military bombs ISWA leaders enclave in Sambisa Forest. 
And moving to other stories now, oil theft has a devastating effect on the Nigerian economy. And according to the Nigerian National Oil Company, it costs the country about $4 billion in revenue every year. Now, this, according to the NMPCL Limited, is because over 200,000 barrels of oil is lost to bunkering, outright theft, and pipeline vandalism on a daily basis. Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail examines the trickle-down effect in Gombe State, especially how it affects availability of petroleum products. The report. Last week, the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC, launched a mobile application to fight oil theft, which is taking a toll on the nation's economy. To fight the minas, the NNPC said the mobile application will enable early reporting of pipeline vandalism for prompt action. An economist, Abdul Wahab Yusuf, said the consequences of oil theft and pipeline vandalism are enormous. Oil sabotage affects economic activity. The government has to do more. If you look at the data where the government said that it has lost nearly 4.1 billion US dollars from oil theft. If we can imagine if such funds have been invested in, say for instance, health, in, health industry, maybe the health infrastructure, road infrastructure, education, and so on and so forth. So government has to put in place more measures. Not necessarily using um, um, security forces, but it has to come up with measures to ensure that such losses can be averted. According to a report published by the Cable in the first quarter of 2022, the NNPC recorded 2.39 trillion naira as gross oil revenue and gas, while subsidy claimed 2.6 trillion naira, meaning more than two thirds of the company's revenue was spent on subsidy. Experts are worried with the development. If the amount that government is investing in first subsidy can also be invested in good roads, in infrastructure, in health facilities, this will also try this will this will also help to improve growth and development. So first subsidy and other subsidy reforms, they which tend to benefit more than the pharmacies. Despite government's claim of financing subsidy, Nigerians still complain of hike in price of petrol, with some Okada riders in Gombe State saying the product is available. But at an exorbitant rate. A liter cost between 210 naira, 215, and 220 naira. The price of a liter ranges between 200, 210, and 215 naira, but no queues at the filling stations. As the largest oil producer in West Africa, Nigeria's economy has solely depended on oil revenue. But over the years, Nigerians have been experiencing difficulties in accessing oil and gas products. From Gombe, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. Well, as you may have known, Trust TV has clocked one. Now, the management of the of tr of trust group owners of the outfit on Monday officially marked its first anniversary. The decision, coincidentally, as part of the anniversary, received an award of excellence for positive impact in the last year. Musa Luka reports. The chief operating officer, Trust TV Ibrahim Shehu, reaffirms the station's readiness to operate within a competitive environment. Shehu said, despite the challenges in operating a digital station. Trust TV is ready to always improve in order to satisfy the needs of its teaming audience. The GCEO Munir Guarzo and other management staff congratulated Trust TV and charged the team to continue to give in their best within the confines of the law. Guarzo assures that the board will invest the necessary resources in Trust TV in order to upscale its operation. The TV is actually going to be my focus. Um, by the time I'm leaving, inshallah, I want to see that um, all my efforts, commitment, dedication is on the TV. The board is also very committed on the TV. Um, they want to see the TV grow to the level that the newspaper has grown. The management of Trust TV received the delegation from Ewald Trusted Agent Synergy, led by the CEO, Aliu Hassan. Hassan appreciated Trust TV for being the voice to the voiceless as well as showing professionalism in its operation. High Point was the presentation of an award to the station by E-World Trusted Agent Synergy. Musa Luka, Trust TV News, Abuja.
Congratulations to us there. Now, the need for media practitioners to be proactive in their day-to-day -day reportage that can make the government improve on its policies has been stressed. Chairman of the Media Trust Foundation, Al-Haji Bilia Bala, made their session during the inauguration of digital marketing training organized by MacArthur Foundation at Daily Trust Glass House in Abuja. The report. The chairman of the Media Trust Foundation, Alaji Biliabala, said media creates content according to what they want to communicate to their target audience or based on what the public wants to see. He said before coming up with a content, one must have a clearly defined audience as successful marketing strategy as guaranteed to help increase conversations and a well-established online brand. The foundation has been doing the little it could, not as big as this in trying to build the capacity of journalists first within its immediate environment, which is the media trust, and subsequently out of media trust. However, in 2017, I think, uh, Mac uh, we applied for MacArthur for funding uh, out of its own Nigeria project for training and sustainability of journalists and media houses in Nigeria. Board member Media Trust Group, Manir Deng Ali, encouraged upcoming journalists to come up with more research content that can make their reportage credible and fair and impact the society positively. Like be thinking on your feet. That is thinking in terms of creating something that goes beyond you. Um, some of the shareholders that you see here of uh, Media Trust didn't have the benefit of this kind of training. But luckily, somehow, a collection of journalists, business people came together and thought of something that should even outlive them. Maybe at the beginning, they were just hoping that at least let's have a weekly paper that is there. But there are a number of people who really, we don't know them you know, we just read about them or we see the work that they are doing and we think that these are the people that we should support and we'll reach out to them and see how we will be able to support them in our things, you know. And I think that, uh, so support for like, you know, the Daily Trust Foundation really also is about the, um, the work they do and how do they do their work. And um, I always tell that, you know, all we are looking for people is balance, <laughs> fairness, you know, balance and fairness, I think that's all we are looking for. We don't want uh, newspapers to become, or news media to become just an opinion piece of the publisher all the time. Director MacArthur Foundation, Dr. Kole Shetima, said the training will not only make the trainees more confident, but also make them good ambassadors at all times. Kabir Lawal, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Federal Ministry of Works says the President Muhammad Buhari-led government will complete all infrastructural projects before the expiration of his tenure in May 2023. Speaking at the National Council of Works meeting in Kano, Director of Planning and Research in the Ministry, G. D. Martins, said the administration has put in place all that is needed to complete ongoing road projects across the country. There are roads that are completed, there are roads that are ongoing, we have opened up about five to six road projects in the northwest, and we have done it in the north central. And few of them are the Unguru Gashua Road, and then we have the Injigawa, the uh, Shuarin Road to Bauchi, and then we have the Shuarin Maiduguri Road towards the northeast, Kano. And then in the north central, we have the Ueto Bridge connecting the Benue and the Nasarawa states. So also we have the second Niger Bridge, which is about 98 to completion. And then we have uh, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway that is also ongoing. So we have quite a number of roads that are nearing completion. Now, there has been a boom in the activities of logistics companies, also known as Waybill, ever since the COVID-19 pandemic brought them to prominence. Ironically, many of these companies are unregistered, which makes the question of regulation and quality control rather difficult. In this report, Emmanuel Sampson looks at the challenges in the business and how 
it can be improved. Logistic business gained traction in 2020 with the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions placed on movement. Within the period of the pandemic, restrictions meant people could not go out to get goods and services. Business on social media also increased, which meant there was a real need for services of logistic companies. Many of those logistic companies are unregistered. They normally pick goods from state to state or one part of the urban areas to the other without proper documentation such as waybills. There are obviously challenges that will come with this. There is no business that is, I, I, when I came to you, I see that people find it difficult doing waybill, selling, traveling to college. I decided to go into this business. I believe that is income. So from there, we need, we are making money to manage life because if we can see that there is no working time. Besides, and that is why I decided, I decided to go into the business to in feeding my family small small. The challenging we are having with the customer is that some of the customers find it difficult to understand. But at the time, when they used to understand that this business, this thing, surely that you must leave. Then if we didn't start, we didn't have that way to keep our item. Then we start with packing them, then we beat us. Just to make sure that we secure people's mortgages. Working closely with these delivery companies are dispatch riders who also face challenges. The challenges we are facing, we riders are facing now is VIO and also the task uh, force in Abuja. That is the challenges we are facing at the roadside. But for the, our own business now, we are facing also fuel challenges now because fuel is cost and our delivery is too low for the payments. Okay, before you got into this business, you have to be calm with customer because customer is always right. But some customers, they are not right, but customer claim that it's always right. So you have to calm down with the any customer you have. Since the customer is king, these companies must be doing a great job despite the challenges. Most of those that do businesses with these companies have nothing but praise for the delivery system and seem to have a lot of trust in them. They only disappoint me. While they send the goods for me, they will bring for me gently. The goods, they will, they will package it very well for me. There's no problem. Only, only during the rainy season. When the rain will fall, touch, touch, touch some, some, some cattle. Only the only chance will just get with that. The World Be Phenomenon continues to fill a crucial need in the business structure of small businesses which do not have the funds to afford established career companies. Emmanuel Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. The need to administer vaccines that will prevent diseases specifically in children has again been reiterated at the flag off of the African Vaccination Week in Abuja. At the commemorative event, the federal government introduced the rotavirus vaccine into the country's expanded program on immunization as part of the week-long activity. Trust TV's Aisha Salihu reports. Strengthening routine immunization helps prevent and reduce mortality and morbidity rate of diseases such as rotavirus, a leading cause of severe diarrhea in young children. The disease accounts for about 215,000 deaths. Of the global 525,000, 15% of all deaths in children under 5 mortality in Nigeria. To attain sustainable high coverage levels of new vaccines, the Federal Ministry of Health, through the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, in collaboration with donor agencies and development partners, launched the rotavirus vaccine with the aim of reaching 7 million children across all 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory within the next 12 months. Children with diarrhea usually have things like brain problems because of the severe dehydration. Many of them don't grow up to, to optimal size, they are underdeveloped. So Rosa virus promises to be a lifesaver, a game changer. The government of Nigeria, with the support of our donors and partners, especially Gabi, has spent huge amounts to procure routine immunization vaccines for the Nigerian children. This is because improving the health of our children remains a priority for this administration. There are calls on parents and caregivers to provide and present infants to access the readily available and free rotavirus vaccine to arrest the transmission of rotavirus-related diarrheal disease while maintaining other hygiene-related preventive measures. Every child will get the opportunity of taking this vaccine at six weeks, at 10 weeks, and at 
14 weeks. That means they'll get the opportunity of taking it when they are taking other vaccines. This is an oral drop and it is easy enough for the child to take. So we need to seize this opportunity, uh, mothers, caregivers, so that our children will be protected from this virus. Today we'll run a cascade of activities that will, among others, boost primary healthcare service delivery and routine immunization coverage, particularly in the underserved. Low performing settlements in the FCT that will be adopted for the integrated medical outreach and routine immunization intensification activities. The African Vaccination Week aims to highlight the collective action needed to promote the use of vaccines to protect people of all ages against vaccine-preventable diseases. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. The Shun State Government has assured traditional religious worshippers in the state of adequate recognition to enable them practice their faith unhindered as guaranteed by the Constitution. Secretary to the State Government Wole Oyebamiji said this in an exclusive interview with Hamid Oyebade in Oshogbo. Government declared Monday as public holiday for the traditionalists in the state to celebrate with their loved ones. The Commissioner for Special Duties, Culture and Tourism, Olalekon Badmus, also said that traditional religion worshippers in the state are given equal opportunities with their Muslim and Christian counterparts. The government has recognition that there is a sheshe, which is traditional. And it is on this premise that Mr. Governor declared today as a public holiday because the day fell on a Saturday. This is to show that we encourage all religious faithfuls. We encourage them. Why? So that they, are, they are can continuously be peace and tranquility in the state. We know that our state is one of the safest and peaceful states in this country, and we want to maintain it. Communities in Basa, local government area of Plateau State, say the four months of no electricity in the entire local government area has increased the rate of crimes in their localities. The residents told Trust TV on Monday that the blackout in the communities followed a windstorm that destroyed 30 electric poles in the local government area. Ado Musa completes the story. Members of the affected communities said since after the destruction of the poles, the Just Electricity Distribution Company, which is responsible for the repairs, has not done anything to restore power in the area, describing the situation as a total disregard of the rights of consumers. The community said the development had resulted to high rate of crime in the area, adding that people who rely solely on electricity for their businesses have been counting losses while some have closed them due to the cost of diesel. For now, it has been the, um, the four months that uh, we have total blackout uh, in Basa community. And uh, it has affected about nine communities. And um, the authority concerned have not done anything about it. It has a very negative implication or effect on the residents of uh, the community because people that use electricity for their businesses now have rendered their businesses comatose. Now by virtue of that, they have not worked it. Like you can see the poles lying down behind me. It leads to houses. They can't access their homes by virtue of that. Look at their cars parked outside. And so they can't access anything. The spokesperson of the company, Friday Elijah, denied that they had neglected the areas, explaining that after the destruction of the poles by the rainstorm, they had fixed more than 30 poles and had repaired 80 percent of the electrical folds. When we learned that uh, there was a natural disaster in that locality uh, arising from uh, falling, falling poles, which was actually occasioned by windstorm, the company expeditiously moved to the loca loca location. We, we procured 37 concrete poles and uh, we've mounted all of them. We've restored supply to 80% of the community of Basa. It is only those in the villages that we are here to uh, give them supply. And the reason was very simple. The environment uh, is, mesh is mashy, the environment is muddy. 
twice we got our crane stopped in that area and uh, it became extremely very difficult for us because of heavy damper in plateau in just in particular for us to continue with uh, the speed the speed with which we we're, we're going and that was why we we're, we're slow down and it's not that we abandoned them uh, even as I speak with you our our crane will be going back again to to, to see to ascertain if we can continue the work. Residents are hopeful that sooner than later, their communities will enjoy power supply after a long while. From Josh Adomusa reporting for Trust TV. This is Trust TV News Hour. We'll be back after this break. Stay with us. <music> Welcome back. Nigerians have been urged to support government's revenue drive by fulfilling their tax payment obligation. Former Minister of Communications and Chief Dean of the All Progressives Congress, Barrister Adeba Yoshitu, stated these on Trust TV's flagship program, Daybreak. According to him, the plan by the government to increase telecoms tax is to ensure that all Nigerians are captured within the, net, within the tax net. Uh, most Nigerians don't pay even the ordinary income tax, except those who live in, who, uh, you know, are civil servants, in particular government, you know, uh, employees. They don't have any choice because the taxes are really, you know, taken, you know, from the source. You know, but for most Nigerians, I mean, we don't pay tax. So government will have to devise the means of taxing, particularly in areas where nobody can really escape, you know, uh, you know, uh, taxing. We do know that over the, the years, you know, oil has been the major income source for government. But we also do appreciate that apart from rising cost of even government, you know, uh, expenditures, you know, uh, revenue from oil itself is dwindling. Dwindling because our oil output is really decreasing. There's so much oil bunkering, you know, and when you talk of oil bunkering, it is like stealing government property. Mm. It happens, and unfortunately, people involved in bunkering are the really worst form of criminals you can, you know, have, you know, around. So government has to look for softer means of, you know, increasing its revenue in order to meet increasing expenditure. For more in business, let's now join Chamung Dabeng. The National Bureau of Statistics says that prices of selected food items increased in July. It made the declaration in its Selected Food Prices Watch report for July 2022, released in Abuja on Monday. The NBS stated that the average price of 1 kg of white beans rose by 23.22% from 441 Naira 21 Kobo in July 2021 to 547 Naira 38 Kobo in July 2022. The report stated also that the average price of 1 kg of tomatoes increased on a year-on-year -year basis by 7.71% from 414 Naira 83 Kobo in July 2021 to 446 Naira 81 Kobo in July 2022. Others include price of 1 kg of beef with an increase of 27.58% from the 1,660 Naira 76 Kobo recorded in July 2021. The NBS also stated that average price price of a bottle of granite oil stood at 1,078 Naira 17 Kobo in July 2022, showing an increase of 40.24% from 768 Naira 81 Kobo in July 2021. 
The Nigerian Communications Commission, NTC, has granted Mafab Communications, one of the two telecommunication companies that acquired 5G Spectrum licenses in December 2021, a five-month extension for its rollout. According to the terms of the 5G license, the licensees were anticipated to start rolling out 5G services on August 24, 2022. Although MAFAB's unified operational license, USA, and numbering plan were not received until the end of July, MAFAB has been given a five-month extension as a result. Farmers have expressed outrage over the 60 billion naira spent on the purchase of palm oil and urged the government to utilize the sector to generate employment and reduce the extreme poverty in the nation. According to data from the National Bureau of Statistics NBS and Nigeria Port Authority NPA, 61.9 billion naira in imports of palm oil pass through seaports each year. Advisor to the Plantation Owners Forum of Nigeria, Pofon, Mr. Fatai Afolabi, urged the government to use the palm oil industry to generate employment and combat poverty while speaking at a forum hosted by the Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, Matrade, in Lagos. That's all for Business News. I am Chamun Dabeng. Thank you, Chamun. Now let's move on to the forensic. The Democratic Republic of Congo National Institute for Biomedical Research says a new case of Ebola virus infection has been confirmed in the eastern city of Beni. The announcement was made on Monday. Now, two days earlier, the World Health Organization had said authorities were investigating a suspected case in Beni after the death of a 46-year-old woman who had shown symptoms consistent with the disease. The institute said in a statement that the genetic sequencing showed the case is linked to the 2018 to 2020 outbreak in North Kivu, which killed nearly 2,300 people. Congo's dense tropical forests are a natural reservoir for the Ebola virus, which causes fever, body aches and diarrhea. Mali's military junta has appointed a colonel Abdoulaye Meiga as the interim replacement for the country's civilian prime minister who has been admitted to hospital. Colonel Meiga is also a government spokesman and minister of territorial administration and decentralization. His appointment was announced in a decree read on state television late Sunday. He provisionally replaces a veteran civilian politician, Choguel Kukala Meiga 64, who was named premier after the junta which took power in august 2020 and carried out a second coup in may 2021 mega who shares the same name as his interim successor had served several times as a minister in previous governments it was an unsuccessful candidate in the presidential election in 2002 2013 and 2018 Top infectious disease expert in the United States, Anthony Fauci, who emerged as a public face of the country's COVID-19 pandemic response, has announced that he will step down in December. Fauci said in a statement on Monday that he will leave both his post as director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, as well as that of top medical advisor to President Joe Biden to pursue the next phase of his career. Fauci became the most recognizable figure from the scientific community during the early days of the COVID-19 crisis, acting as a source of sober medical authority for many Americans, while frequently butting head with Donald Trump over the former president's pandemic response. Up next, let's join Aji Shafi for Sport News. Minister of Youth and Sport Development Sunday Dare has urged boxer Anthony Joshua, UFC fighter Kamaru Usman, and Nigeria's women national under 20 football team, the Falcons, not to allow their defeat over the weekend dampen their spirits. Nigeria born Joshua and Usman lost world title bouts in boxing and Miss Martial Art UFC 278, while the Falcons crashed out of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup at the quarter-final stage. The minister says despite their losses, they can keep their heads up because they gave their best and performed gallantly. 
that is says they remain national heroes and heroines, believing they will bounce back stronger and better. He urged Nigerians to rally around the trail and help quicken the process of their recovery. And still in football, President of Benin Republic Football Association, Maturin de Chakros, has announced changes in the name of Benin's national team. Benin Republic national team has been known as Kures of Benin Republic, while the president elected for another four-year term announced the change in name of the national team. According to the president, the national team will now be referred to as Cheetah of Benin, replacing the old name. Maturin de Chakros was quoted as saying there will be no more Kures of Benin as far as football is concerned. From this day on, our footballers will be called cheaters of Benin Republic. That Sport News. I am Adeni Ajishafe. And with that Sport News, we have come to the end of News Hour on Trust TV. For more news, do connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Nten Ekbang. Many thanks for watching. Good night.